Welcome back. It's estimated that 2.8 million adults in the United States live with schizophrenia. Patients experience cycles of crisis that disrupt many areas of their life, from personal relationships to professional aspirations. The stigma surrounding schizophrenia only adds to these challenges, making education and empathy crucial components in addressing this issue. Joining us now is a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, Desiree Matthews. Desiree, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, um, as we talk about schizophrenia, a lot of people have these ideas on what it is, but can you, you know, from your experience and background, tell us what schizophrenia is and how does it affect the brain and our behavior? Yes, that's a really great question. I think a lot of us um, may have had experience of learning about mental health conditions, say through TV, uh, movies. When it comes to schizophrenia, it is a chronic brain disorder, so there's no cure at this time. However, I think it's important to share with the audience today that there is effective treatments for adults living with schizophrenia. We know schizophrenia can affect the way that somebody feels, how they behave, um, really how they interact with the world and experience the world. With schizophrenia, individuals can experience hallucinations, so hearing or seeing other things that really other people don't experience. We can have delusions or false beliefs. We can have changes in mood, lack of pleasure or interest in things, changes the way we learn our memory. So this uh, disorder can really affect all facets of life. That's why it's important to intervene early, to make the diagnosis early, and to have consistent treatment early on in the course of the illness. Now, why is this condition considered a complex and chronic brain disorder? So first, uh, there's no cure, number one. So it is chronic, it is persistent, necessitates lifelong treatment. And what makes it difficult to treat is, uh, I would say in my clinical experience, the need to take daily medication. I'm not sure about you, Kevin, but I know for me, it's hard to take medication every day. And um, there's no exception with mental health or schizophrenia. And for individuals living with schizophrenia, even missing just a few medication doses a month can really increase their risk of having a relapse. And the relapses can be devastating. They can disrupt daily life. They can make it harder for us to treat the symptoms in the future. Um, so consistent treatment is very important for these individuals. Now, I'm curious to know, are there any early signs of schizophrenia that might appear during adolescence or childhood? Oh, that's a great question. So we do see uh, individuals with schizophrenia, we can see a prodrome or kind of these precursor symptoms. They may be subtle behavioral changes, um, changes um, in interest. People may withdraw and not engage in activities. Um, they may become increasingly suspicious of, of people. And um, oftentimes it's not until, you know, um, you know, graduating high school, maybe people are working off in college, and all of a sudden the family is getting a phone call um, that their loved one is, you know, having, you know, psychosis, the hallucinations, the delusions, um, and this can be very frightening both for the individual and for the family because oftentimes with the stigma, there is a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of misconceptions. Now, can you actually address the stigma that faced so many people living with schizophrenia? As we mentioned, a lot of times we're learning about mental health disorders from what we see in the media, TV, uh, movies, and that's not always 100% accurate in the portrayal. And we just came out of Mental Health Awareness Month in May, and part of my partnership here today with Johnson & Johnson is to bring the education and to get the conversation going about schizophrenia and really showing people that there is hope, that there is effective treatment, and people can really thrive post-diagnosis with the um, appropriate treatment option. So I would say there's hope and just having the conversation can destigmatize and help people open up to reaching out for help, whether that to be, you know, initially to family, to talk to a healthcare professional. So that way we are able to provide those treatment options. Now, what are some common obstacles that face or that patients face when seeking treatment for schizophrenia? 
Uh, so certainly, most of the time, people are initially offered an oral medication, but we do have modern schizophrenia treatments that can make it easier for individuals to stick with treatment, to take treatment, as well as um, the need for a daily pill. This reminds people oftentimes of their illness. So we have long-acting injectable medications now that offer a variety of flexible dosing options to meet the patient's need. With Johnson & Johnson, we have three available LAI options for adults with schizophrenia. We have Invega Sistena, which is given every one month. We have Invega Trinza, which is given every three months. And lastly, we now have Invega Hafira, which is given every six months. So now we are allowing, you know, appropriate adult patients with schizophrenia the options of taking treatment just twice a year rather than having to take a pill 365 days of, year, of the year. So a lot more flexibility to meet the treatment needs of these adults. Now, when we talk about stigma, uh, this also impacts, you know, the family of those um, who may live with schizophrenia. You know, how can family members and friends support someone living with this condition um, and ensure that they're kind of uh, disregarding or stay away, staying away from stigma? So it first starts with education, and there's a lot of advocacy groups um, across the country um, and getting involved in the community with support groups, advocacy groups is, I think, the first step. It helps you understand, um, you know, what to recognize in your loved ones. If there is, you know, a concern where you need to talk to a healthcare professional about, you know, making treatment changes, for instance, but also it helps you understand how to take care of yourself um, because you need to take care of yourself first and foremost to be able to take care of your loved one living with schizophrenia. And I think also the education on what treatment options are available is really important because a loved one um, may not be able to always advocate for themselves in certain situations. So for that loved one to understand the treatment options available and to really talk um, as a treatment team about all the risks and benefits of the treatments, including the LAI treatments I mentioned with Johnson & Johnson. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of what we learned is from the media. Um, so that could be movies, uh, online posts, um, which means that people can be um, vulnerable to misinformation. Where can people go that is going to offer credible resources and information about living with this condition? Oh, that's a great point that you bring up. There's a website called treatyourschizophrenia.com. That's treatyourschizophrenia.com. And it has information about the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia, but also about the long-acting injectable medications for adults living with schizophrenia that we mentioned today. And I know we talked about uh, some of the challenges, but do you have any success stories or examples that you can share where patients significantly benefited from consistent treatment and support? Oh yes, I worked in community mental health for over eight years and um, I've had many individuals thriving despite living with schizophrenia, anywhere from being able to go back to college, graduating, um, getting married, having families. So um, if anything, there very much is hope. Of course, there's always going to be some challenges living with any chronic disorder, but just really instilling that there is hope out there with early treatment and consistent treatment. Well, Desiree, I want to thank you so much for joining us and having this very important discussion.